Today, I'm going to show you how you can create Halloween themed t-shirt designs with the help of Leonardo AI. So the first thing I would recommend you do is look for some Halloween themed prompts. And you can do this by typing Halloween into this search mask right here where it says recent creations and then hitting search. And you will get a lot of really nice looking images that are Halloween themed. And the ones that you think would work well for t-shirt design or stickers, you know, whichever product you're selling, I would go ahead and click on like for those images. Not all of these are going to work well on t-shirts. For example, this neon style right here it might look good but it's really hard to remove the background and yeah just neon designs typically don't work too well on t-shirts we've also got some more like photographic images like this cat again wouldn't recommend that on t-shirts you want to look out for these cartoon themed ones that are more flat 2d images ideally not a lot of random objects and shapes around the graphic itself and yeah once you see any of that look good just click on the like button and then they will be saved to your collection over here in the personal feed so if you click into this go to liked feed you will see everything that you've clicked like on before and you'll be able to easily access the prompts for these images as well and use them for inspiration alter them for your own niches that sort of thing for example Let's say I wanted to use this style right here for a different dog breed. You could click into this, hit remix, and then it's going to bring up the entire prompt right here at the top that that person used, the same model as well as the same settings on the left hand side. I tend to change the dimensions because I prefer something around the 1000 pixel mark. And um, you don't have to do that, but it just makes life easier afterwards with removing the background, that sort of thing. I also then want to change the prompt a bit so in this case we've got my child's spaniel dog right here we can swap this all out and do for example bull terrier just let's see what that turns out like make sure to check the rest of the prompt to see that you don't have to swap out anything else sometimes people might use the subject multiple times within their prompt so we'd have to swap it out in different places and you can make further adjustments like here it says halloween hat bats flying around if you don't want any of these things you can remove them as well once you're ready hit generate and just by the way i am using the alchemy feature right here which is only available for the paid plans unfortunately but i also tend to test both of the results so i've turned alchemy off now which means the results are going to be less detailed and a bit more plain not as accurate but sometimes those could work really well for t-shirts too so it's definitely worth trying both of them out um, if you've got a leonardo subscription now we just have to wait for these to be generated so here we are these are the alchemy results which look okay they definitely look decent but some of these would be really hard to use in a t-shirt design this might be the closest to what i was looking for we'd have to remove some of these scattered objects around the sides that are a bit too messy but um yeah besides that the the actual style of the graphic looks pretty cool it's just that there's a lot of stuff around it that we'd have to get rid of um, but that gives you an example of how to adjust a prompt the non-alchemy results actually look horrible in this case it's very hit and miss like sometimes you'll get decent results without alchemy if i scroll down further i actually amended a prompt um, for a ghost a halloween themed ghost earlier to make it cowboy themed so um, i wanted a ghost that wears a cowboy hat essentially and some of the non-alchemy results are actually okay for this in my opinion and they could be usable for t-shirts scroll down further here are some of the alchemy enabled results which definitely look better a bit more detailed but again, as you can see, here it is without alchemy. And I don't think these look too bad, right? They could be used. So once you've found a graphic that you want to actually download and apply to t-shirt design, all you have to do is basically hover over the image and then click on download right here. We're going to do all of the upscaling and removing background elsewhere where it works a lot better. I don't think Leonardo has the greatest results there and it also costs you extra credits. So I would do it externally where it's free. So the next website you need to go to is called ClipDrop because they've got a lot of really cool free AI features, including a background remover. And I will leave a link to this in the description down below. All you have to do here is drag and drop the image that you've just downloaded 
from Leonardo and it might be too high in quality, which is fine. We can just click on downscale right here. I thought I selected a thousand pixels for the graphic, but um, it said it was 1,500, not sure why that happened. But as you can see, this very quickly removes the background and it does a super good job considering it's free. And then all you have to do once it's done is hit download in the top right corner and that will then save it to your device. And next step is going to be increasing the quality to make sure that this actually prints well in the end. So in order to increase our quality, we will use Vectorizer AI. And a quick side note here, this has been free for ages, but I believe they're going to make this a paid tool sometime in September. So if you've got a lot of images that you need to upscale or, you know, vectorize, then do it now um, because yeah, time is running out. And my designs also has a bulk upscaler that uses this very system, vectorizer.ai. So if you've got a lot to go through, I've got a separate video explaining to you how to use vectorizer in bulk. However, if you're on this site, all you have to do, if you're doing it one at a time, is just drag and drop your file onto this. And I'm using the file without the background, by the way, that we just downloaded from ClipDrop, because we can turn that into a vector and make a life easier that way. It takes a few seconds to process, but then, as you can see, quality increases dramatically and it is infinitely scalable. We can click download over here. Make sure to copy my settings. I usually just change this right here and I think the gap filler um, settings are slightly different to the default but anything else is pretty much the default setting and then click download right here. Now I'm going to be using Adobe Illustrator to finalize my t-shirt design and sort of put the Leonardo graphic together with some text and other elements to bring this to life. And Illustrator is my design tool of choice, but you don't have to use this. There will be a link to sign up to Illustrator in the description, but alternatively, you could also use Inkscape, which is a free vector editing tool or anything else like Photoshop, Photop, where you can add text to your graphics. If you are using Illustrator, um, a few tips before we get started. So I've got my ad set to 4,500 pixels to 5,400 pixels, which works well for t-shirt designs. And I've also changed the background color of my artboard because I want to optimize this design for dark t-shirts. And you can quickly change your artboard color by heading to File, Document Setup, and then if you enable the Simulate Colored Paper option right here, you can change the background color of your artboard with this slider. And that's really, really handy because you don't have to draw out a box, you know, of, of black and then lock it and all that stuff, which gets really annoying. But let's get started by actually adding the SVG file onto our artboard. And you can do that by heading to File, click on Place, select the SVG on your device, and then you can open it up like this. You just have to sort of click and drag and then there we go this is our cowboy ghost and i would recommend checking that there's no random floaty objects which the background remover didn't catch you can first of all move your ghost off of the artboard to help with that and then also hit Control y on your keyboard for the outline mode and this all looks very clean there's no sort of floating objects around here the only thing i noticed is that there's a gap that the background remover removed right here, which it shouldn't have done. And um, But we can quickly fill this in by using the direct selection tool. You can also hit A on your keyboard. Just select this little area right here where you've got the gap, then hold down Shift M on your keyboard. And that's going to bring up the Shape Builder tool, which is going to be really handy because we can just click into this gap. And there we go, it's filled it in with white. If it's not white for you, just change the color by selecting this and go into this right here, make it gray as well or something like that. Um, you can do that with all of your gaps or imperfections. And yeah, I think now this looks great. Let's just group it all, draw this over back onto the app board and let's start bringing this to life. So one thing before we add text that you often see in these Halloween themed designs is some sort of checkered pattern. And you can quickly replicate this with the rectangle tool. So let's start off with that. Find it in the toolbar. We only want to have a fill selected, ideally white and no stroke color. Then click on the artboard and draw out a square. Hold down shift to make sure it actually stays a square and doesn't turn into a rectangle. And then what we want to do is just replicate this down and to the right. Make sure that the edges touch just like this. And if you're having a hard time making these touch, you can head over to view and enable your smart guides, which will definitely help you line this up more easily. Let's draw this over to the bottom left now, like so. That looks good. And uh, one last time we repeat that step before we can copy this over. So now if we select all of these squares, we can hold down Alt. That's how you duplicate items, by the way. Hold down Alt while you've got them selected. 
click and drag and hold shift at the same time to keep these aligned properly. And now, once you've done this once, you can hit control D to duplicate the process. And there we go. We're quickly creating one of those really cool looking checkered lines that you see in a lot of Halloween designs. And let's actually remove these two at the end. I think that looks neater. And because these are not grouped yet, I want to group these all. So select all of your different squares, click control G on your keyboard to group these. And now let's move them up a bit behind this ghost. Um, now they are showing up in front, but you can quickly fix that by hitting control shift and then opening bracket in order to move this to the bottom layer. And that's a shortcut that I use all the time. So control shift opening or closing bracket moves things around to the bottom or top layer essentially. And now that we've got this sorted out, let's actually add a bit of text at the bottom. Um, and I've got or I found a really nice font for this. Let's use the type tool and just click onto the artboard right here, change this color to white and increase the font size. So the font I actually found for this is called Western. And I'd recommend giving this a try because it looks really, really cool for these cowboy themed designs. And you can find the font itself on Creative Fabrica. I will have a link to that in the description as well. Boo Ha is what we're going to put right here for this design. Make this a bit bigger and uh, let's add some effects to give this a bit more of an interesting look because at the moment this text looks a bit boring. So if we draw this up, once again, put it onto the bottom layer. And the first thing I'd like to do is fill out this space right here a little bit more. And a quick trick to do that if you've got text nearby is to head over to Object, Envelope Distort, and click Make with Warp whilst having your text layer selected, by the way. Changing the style from Arc to Arc Upper and then turning the bend down to about minus 15. Then if we click OK, we can drag this box up kind of like this to create a really nice looking effect. And fill this space out a little bit better. There we go. Let's add a little bit to these corners right here as well to fill that out. Um, let's make some very simple shapes that do really well in many t-shirt designs that you can create with the um, ellipse tool. So quick trick right here, just draw out a not a perfect circle, make it a bit taller than it is wide, kind of like this, then duplicate this over, duplicate both of these down and I tend to move these up just a few pixels like this to the side as well. There we go. So they overlap a tiny bit, as you can see right here on these edges. And now we can use the shape builder tool again, shift M to click in the middle because we want to cut out this shape right here. So sort of a nice decorative element. Click in the middle and then delete everything else. By holding down Alt, you can delete objects with the Shape Builder tool. So as we can see right there, that's getting erased. And this on the side as well, you can zoom in with the mouse wheel whilst you're doing this. And there we go. Now we've got a neat looking shape that we can sort of duplicate, scatter around our design a bit. I like to alter the sizing as well so they're not all the same size. And there we go. I think that looks pretty neat. Let's copy this over um, to the other side as well. Hold down Alt on your keyboard, drag over, hold down Shift so it stays in line. And now you could leave it like that or you could use the reflection tool which you can access over here or by hitting O on your keyboard. And then you could click and drag, hold down Shift and turn this around to 90 degrees. So that way it is symmetrical. So I think that looks pretty cool so far just the color is a bit boring. We've only got white stuff, which can work, but I want to implement some of the colors that we have in this graphic in our objects and in the text itself. So first of all, let's outline this text because then it's easier to color this in. Um, select the text, go to object, expand and hit OK. And now we're going to use the eyedropper tool, hit I on your keyboard, and we will sample one of these orange colors right here. So this pumpkin has some nice oranges. Just click on the color that you like the most in your design or want to use somewhere else. And then you can sort of paste that color onto a different object by just holding down Alt and then clicking on the object. So hold down Alt and paste the orange onto any other objects in your design. Really, really quick and easy. There we go. So we've added a bit of interest. I think this sort of, you know, gray beigey color looks quite cool. Let's also paste that onto some of these letters like so, and maybe some of these stars. There we go. That's not actually made a massive difference. Uh, maybe this color looks a bit nicer or this one. Yeah, I think that looks quite cool. And lastly, a bit of a darker orange or brown perhaps to finish this off color these letters in as a bit too dark for my liking. So we are posting this on darker t-shirts. So let's choose a slightly, slightly brighter brown. 
and color some of the rest of these in. There we go. And there we've got a really nice looking design. I think the, the letters at the bottom could be a bit more playful. So one last step or one last suggestion would be to ungroup your text with Control Shift G. And now you can individually, oh, that didn't work. Control Shift G. Might have to do it twice. And then you can individually move these letters around, increase the size or, you know, give them a bit of a tilt. I also like to use the rotate tool that you can access with R on your keyboard to quickly, you know, turn these around a bit, uh, move them up and down. There we go. Just make this a bit more fun, a bit more playful because it is, it is a Halloween design. Um, it's a bit of a, a funny vibe. People want to enjoy themselves when they wear this. So I think making the text a little bit more playful can help by just literally moving these letters around a bit, making them look a bit more wonky. You can easily do that. So it can definitely help add to your design quality and feel. And there we go. I think that looks really, really interesting. If you want, you would go ahead and make sure these things are actually aligned to the center. You can do that with um, the align to our bot function up here. But besides that, the design looks finished to me. Now you can just save this to your device and upload it to many different print on demand products. In case you didn't notice, I'm actually wearing a sweatshirt which has a design on it that I created with the help of Leonardo AI. And I ordered multiple products through Printify with AI designs on them to make sure their print quality actually looks decent and the results were super interesting. And you can find out what the results were if you click on this video right here.